Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, my name is Don Lee. I'm with Education Week and Ed Week Market Brief. And I'm here, of course, to attend the conference, uh, attend some workshops. Uh, I'm mainly here, however, to go ahead and go to the exhibit hall starting tomorrow, oh, yeah, one uh, which is going to be very, very good. I understand there's going to be about 400 vendors attending, which is a very large conference mm -hmm. or trade show to go to. Uh, professionally, in my career, I've gone to about 50 trade shows and conferences. Yeah. This is probably the sixth time I've been to Orlando for yeah. a conference <laughs> in my career. So I kind of I know the place, the territory by now very well. Yes. So. Um, Education Week, in case your viewers don't know who right. we are, yes. we are a nonprofit organization. We're based in Bethesda, Maryland. We've been around for about 30 years, mm -hmm. and our mission is to provide information to educators, teachers, and principals who work in the K-12 through education field. And it doesn't make any difference whether they work in public education or charter schools or private schools. Um, so we're read worldwide right. by educators. Mm -hmm. And we also launched a new service uh, more than a year ago called Ed Week Market Brief. And that is a premium service that's read primarily by vendors who are trying to sell into the K through 12 education marketplace. Oh. And we're also read by school district leaders who want to have a better understanding how other school districts are making purchasing decisions and how they going about trying to decide with all the numerous vendors out there to try to find the best sources of, of educational tools and games and things like that for yeah. their educators as well too. Um, good group of people to work with. We have a pretty solid staff of writers and reporters. Mm -hmm. Many of them have been around for a long time. Right. So they understand the marketplace very well, the education field. Uh, we also have a number of bloggers. Some are freelancers, some are in-house bloggers as well too. Mm -hmm. And we do occasionally accept, you know, blogs from other people as well too. Yeah. Uh, we are a non uh, not only are we nonprofit, we're also nonpartisan. So we don't write any editorials whatsoever, right. but we do accept a lot of letters to the editor, uh -huh. which we do publish as well too. Yeah. So I'm excited to be here. I've, I've been to other similar education conferences before, but not strictly just on education per se. I, I went to the American Librarian Association conference about six months ago, which I believe was also held in Orlando too. You know, I so. yeah, I think so too. So I've been around a lot, but this is the first one where it's just strictly focused just on education per se. So I'm right. very excited to be here today. Yeah. So. Uh, so obviously then your first time at FETC at all. Yes, it is. So, it's my yeah. first time. I'm, I'm told it's a very large conference it to is. go to. And I've noticed that today, just walking around, yeah. talking to people, checking out some of the workshops. Mm -hmm. I took a peek downstairs at the exhibit hall, which they're still constructing right now. Right. Yeah. And so they're very busy getting things together there, yeah. too. It's massive. Yeah. Oh, it is massive. And I've been on the other side, by the way, as an exhibitor. So I know how difficult and time consuming <laughs> it is uh, to get this plan, to get here, to deal with the logistics, mm -hmm. making sure all your paperwork is taken care of, right. uh, making sure all your last minute expenses are taken care of. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you mean I got to spend $90 for a chair? You know, things yeah. like that, for <laughs> exactly. example, that yeah. you didn't plan on, but yeah. all of a sudden you have to plan on. And right. what do you mean I had to pay for Wi-Fi too? Right. You know, it's right. like, what is that? So, yeah. 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 Um, but I'm very impressed with the number of vendors who are here, though. A lot of big names, but also a lot of startup companies yes. as well, too. So, yeah. well, very and exciting. I think, you know, and, I, and I think that's one of the, sorry to interrupt, but no. I, I, I think that's one of the key things uh, that Fetzi has that it's really weird. A lot of other, it, just even non-education conferences, they don't focus on at all are new startups in their field. And, you know, there's a whole startup section here yeah. in the vendor area for Fetzi. And that's all it's all, you know, the whole thing is all about are these ed tech or education related startups. Yeah. And they have a special area where, you know, you can go as a participant and, and as an attendee and, and visit with these folks that are just now starting to, you know, get off the ground or trying to get off the ground and you just don't see that yeah yeah it's very hard for startups because um i'm from the washington dc metropolitan area so i'm very active in the startup community and the tech community mm -hmm. and i know people who work at startups it's very tough just to get your name out there right. much less 
get the revenue that you need to get started or find the funding that you need to get started as well too. Right. And for startups, let's be realistic, going to a conference like this, it's a major commitment, mm -hmm. but it's also a major expense as well oh, too. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, where else are you gonna go to to right. meet right. a lot of your potential clients, right. teachers and principals and people like that? It's very hard. And it's very hard also from talking to vendors to break into the education market uh, when you're dealing with schools and school districts because all of them have their own kinds of purchasing processes or ways you have to go through. Some, for example, you have to go to the main school district office. Others, it's like on a school by school basis. Right, right. And so you really have to know the territory yeah. and you have to know people, you have to make contacts, you have to really understand what the market is. It's not the same from each school district, it's different. And that takes time. Right. That takes patience. That takes a lot of research as well. Right. I mean, you've got to understand that. Uh, but the surprising thing I've noticed in recent years that a lot of people who get into the startup industry and education were educators yes yes at one time they yes. were teachers yes. Yes. they were principals so they kind of understand the language yep. they kind of understand you know the market but they still have to understand how to sell better right uh in that whole marketplace and things like that as well yeah, yeah we um, see the term yeah. entrepreneur come up a lot and that's 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 a new term that's been thrown around and that's exactly what it is in fact um one of our guests from a previous show that we run into at several conferences uh, from Arkansas is uh, NWA 3D. And these are the former teachers that started a 3D printing company because they saw a need for, right. you know, and their company sells some wonderful 3D printers, but they also have free training and free lessons and free, you know, they, they get the... The same thing that Safari and Microsoft and Scantron and Frolic and all these big companies, you know, are they get they've been in the business long enough to understand it now. Right. That, okay, we sell this product, but here's the support that has to that, you know to, to be around it. It's what you guys do. You provide that support at Education Week. I mean, right. that's I've been reading you for years. So good. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad to hear that. But you know, you do that. That's that's what everything is about is that support, whether it's just uh, attending something like this and reporting on it to let you know educators know about it or you know, sinking in on some new idea, assessment or something like right. that, or growth mindset or something along that line. Yeah. That, that's correct, that's correct. And one of the things I think that a lot of vendors have to realize is that when you get into the marketplace, it's not just selling the products, you do have to provide the training mm -hmm. and the support is necessary. And that's one of the things from talking to school district leaders that they really look at. It's not, you might be the cheapest vendor in a bidding process, right. but that doesn't make any difference to them if you're not gonna be around the next day right. to help out with support or questions or ongoing training. Because I think one of the challenges a lot of school district leaders have is that, yeah, you might be cheap, but are my teachers really gonna use this? Right. Are my students really gonna use this? And that's something that they have to find out Yes. Uh, basically on a trial basis. Is this something that's really suitable? And I think for a lot of teachers, as we all know, um, they do a great job, but they're under a lot of pressure these oh, days. Sure. And coming to them and saying, we have this new product or new service we want you to use in your classroom, it's like, gee, like I don't have enough to do. Exactly, great, one more thing I have to do. Yeah, one yeah. more thing I have to learn yeah. or introduce to my students gotcha. and things like that. And sometimes it's a big help to them. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it may not be, and you don't know until you get in there right. and start piloting product, some of your products and services to see what's gonna work very well yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think one of the other things that, not just startups, I, th I think companies in general that deal in the education sector, um, that some of them, well, probably through an experience has has come to this particular conclusion. But one of the things that, that I, I think is widely underappreciated, perhaps misunderstood, um, perhaps just maybe not understood, is that education for as many educators as there are is really a pretty close-knit, small group of folks. And if, if you're a vendor, you know, and, and you sell something and it goes completely south, word is going to spread very quickly that you know you didn't supply the support or you didn't provide the training or you know we tried to do this and it went wrong and it'll catch on like wildfire and 
it takes a lot to put those fires out, you know, once it catches on. Uh, and I know, you know, we're, we're actually based out of uh, Hope, Arkansas. Okay. And Arkansas in itself, Arkansas as a state is already a close knit community. Right. And then out of that close knit community, you take educators. And in our case, we deal mostly, you know, we work with mostly the technology folks in the schools and in Arkansas, if, if something catches on positively, generally the whole state, oh, not, you know, you know, not don't quote me on that, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? Generally speaking though, and I guess really you could quote me on that one. Generally speaking, if something catches on, most of the districts in the state are going to catch on because they see it's working, it's working, it's working. Okay, let's all try this. And if something doesn't, or a company doesn't, yeah, it goes the opposite direction, and nobody in the state will do business with you based on what you know what happened with these three or four districts because it all catches on and it goes bananas. So, um, but all that aside, I, I, I do think it is very very cool that Fetsy provides this venue for startups to come in and say, hey, this is what we're doing, this is what we're going to try, this is, and I don't know. Um, I'd be interested. I, I, I need to. We'll need to ask Renette about this um, and, and talk to the folks at, at LRP. Um, I'd be interested to know how many of the startup folks that they bring in for the startup part of this um, either come back as we're not startup anymore. You know, now we are a full fledged company. Or uh, if they don't necessarily come back, just kind of a follow up to say, "Hey, you were at Fetsy as a startup. Where are you now? How are things going?" Where did that go? What what were some of the stumbling blocks that you ran into after Fetsy? Or what were some of the things that helped that, you know absolutely launch you through the roof because of Fetsy? I, I think that would be a neat That's a very up. good question. And just to kind of follow up earlier, yeah. uh, it's from talking to vendors based on their experience, they have found that one of the best ways to promote yourself is to be extremely active on social media. Mm -hmm. In fact, I found out that teachers are very active on Twitter. They will communicate with each other and follow each other on Twitter. For example, I talked to a vendor last year who's based in Washington State, been a startup for about two years, doing okay primarily in Washington State, and then all of a sudden they started seeing sales in Ohio. Now they haven't been active in Ohio and they were kind of scratching their head wondering, well, why are we starting to get sales in Ohio for? It turns out that teachers found out about them through Twitter, through social media, yeah. and decided to go ahead and purchase their products directly. So all of a sudden, they started seeing an increase of sales in Ohio. Yeah. And so they learned the hard way. you got to really get out there and promote yourself these days on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever the case may be. But Twitter seems to be the social media platform that teachers seem to prefer the yeah. most. Maybe it's a time press thing. Maybe they just don't have a lot of time to be on Facebook, wherever the case may be. So if you really want to get the word out, you've got to be very active. And one of the things that surprises me is, unfortunately, because I, I work with lots of vendors, a lot, some of them are not very active on social media. Yeah, right. And, right. and they're spending too much money on other things. I mean, going to trade shows is nice. Don't get me wrong. It's a good way to promote yourself. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or they're using the old-fashioned direct marketing thing, which doesn't seem to work anymore. Right. So you, the smart thing is you've got to be active on social media. You have to have a good website you got to manage your website well, and it has to be user-friendly. Yeah. Right. Because right. as we all know, we're very time-pressed these days. And if you're a teacher or an educator, and you get on a website, if you can't figure out within a few seconds what the oh, heck yeah. you're trying to sell yeah. or how to, to buy your product, they're going to jump right off. Yeah. And admittedly, working with other vendors, I will sometimes go on their website, and I will, like, read it for like five minutes and scratch my head wondering yes. what are you selling right <laughs> what are you yes. doing yeah, where yes. can i find out about where, where are you based out of what well, you know that's the kind of thing that's really important right you know you hit the hit nail on the head social media we can now understand i have a lot of former students that work all across the country and it's amazing that's one of the first things a smart startup does right. is it employs the social media person right but then it also tells the rest of its staff hey Let's get on Slack. Let's right. do this. Let's make right. sure that we're, you know, we're sharing the same thing. And in education, it works the same well. You know, between Twitter mm -hmm. and you know Snapchat, mm -hmm. that seems to be a big one with the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, Instagram. Now we're mm -hmm. seeing a, a huge move to Instagram. Yes. 
you know, to kind of go in hand in hand. But, you know, there's a lot of great products out there that let you do all in one fail swoop. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny that the vendors can't realize that, that, you know, you know, you might be here to, to man a booth, but you're actually probably the frontline guy for social mm -hmm. media or girl at, right. at that time, you know, to right. really put it out. For us, that's one of our biggest things is we meet most of our guests um, from Twitter. Mm -hmm. We meet most of our guests that we have for our, ra our regular uh, radio show we do every Wednesday. We pick them up online and they usually reach out to us or we reach out to them and that's how we start the relationship. We maybe never spoken to them before except through social media. And, and I think you're, you really hit it on the head there. And that website thing, phew, you know, I, and I love the new designs we're seeing. Yeah, right. Basic, large. Mm -hmm. it, it's really yellow pages on the web. That's what it is. Give me just a, a that's what I'm looking for, a plumber. And right. this is their time and this is what they sell and this is where they are. Yeah. Right. I, I, you're right. We're back to just give me the information and then I'll follow up once I get hooked. Well, right. one of our good friends always says, hook them and then cook them. And that's, right. that's it. You've got to hook them first. So right. we'll see what the vendors do in here tomorrow right. with their booths. You know, yeah, that's, right. that, I love that part of the exhibition hall. Right. Uh, how they hook me. All right. Draw me in. No, I love going through trade shows like this. I love walking up and down. I've, I've worked on both sides of the aisle, right. so I know exactly what it's like to be on the other side, mm -hmm. trying to get people to your booth, have a pitch, talk to them for a few minutes, get their business card, find out whether they're serious or not serious or right. not. Of course, you got your swag and all your free right, souvenirs yes. you got to give away to. Yeah. too. And, and sometimes yeah. it's all people are looking for right. some souvenirs to take right. home to their kids right. or their office yep. and things like that as well, yep. too. Uh, but you, I, I think from a booth standpoint, um, because especially for this show where you have about 400 vendors, mm -hmm. you, you got to really draw people's attention very quickly yes. because they're walking up and down. They're tired. They've been going to workshops. They're on the phone talking to their office, whatever. Right. So you got to really hook them very quickly yes. and get them in, on board and have that conversation with them. Scan their badge and just see where you want to go from yeah. there. Yeah. 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 That, that's exactly well, right. Well, there's one thing we like to do is we like to do the 45 second elevator pitch. Okay. At the end. Okay. So, Hit us up with your 45 second elevator pitch that discusses Education Week, you and everything that you're doing here at this conference. No problem. Thank you very much. <laughs> Boy, 40, 45 seconds. On, on the spot. On, a whim. Oh, on the spot. Good. Okay. <laughs> here I go. My name is Don Lee. I actually work at, in sales at Education Week and Ed Week Market Brief. Education Week, we help educators uh, who work in the K through 12 education field. Ed Week Market Brief, we help vendors and consultants who are trying to sell into the K-12 education marketplace. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, please go to our website, Education Week or Ed Week Market Brief. We're more than happy to help you out and answer any questions.